presented by Church Tech U. It's the Pro Presenter Show. On today's show, how to use the mask slayer to get special shapes for your LED wall or even a projection screen. Hi, and welcome again to the Pro Presenter Show. This is the show where I teach all about Pro Presenter. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. And before we get started, why don't you join the over 10,000 other people who have already liked and subscribed to this channel? Go ahead, give me a thumbs up, etc. too. Okay, so this past Sunday, as I'm recording this, was Easter Sunday. And we did something special at my church. So I'm going to show you just a little clip that I made with my, um, with my iPhone while I was on a camera. Um, and then show you how you can do this in ProPresenter. So... Let's head over to my computer and we will uh, take a look. So, first off, let me show you what I'm talking about. So, I'm going to put my mouse right there and then take this full screen and... Oops. Yep. So, see that? We've got um, basically... This is, very simply, that was an upside-down equilateral triangle. So the team during the week had gone through and re refactored our LED wall. What you can't necessarily tell from that um, video was that each of those segments were in a different space. The largest one was further upstage, the middle, the next one down was a little uh, further downstage, then downstage some more, then finally downstage some more. So it was not only providing more height in the um, in the background, but it was providing some depth, which had some unique challenges. That though isn't that big of a deal that's all done with the processor etc but how did we get that shape well we use pro video player but it is possible to do in pro presenter so i thought that i would show you exactly how i would go about doing exactly the same thing but in pro presenter so uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to have a screen that does this so Let's go to screens and then configure screens. Chances are you've already done this if your LED wall has been installed for a while and you're using ProPresenter with it, but we could absolutely uh, do this here just to show you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to, this time I'm going to use a placeholder screen, but you could absolutely use a connected display or something from Blackmagic hardware like a Decklink Duo, etc. Uh, you could even send it uh, via NDI or Siphon if you had good reasons to do those. But I'm just going to do a new placeholder and I'm going to do this large size. This is technically not 4K. Uh, 4K is a little wider but uh, it'll work for our purposes. It's technically quad HD. So I'm going to do that and that gives me this um, size. So that's a, a really large size. Now normally I advise people not to do 4K because from a certain distance you really can't tell any difference whatsoever between 1080p and 4K. For a lot of people, you know, after you get past the first row or so, and the first row isn't typically filled up to capacity, so after you get past the first row or so, you can't tell the difference. But since this configuration is so tall, I'm going to go ahead and do this in 4K. In your situation, maybe you're going to want to do a different uh, layout, but whatever. So, um, so we've got that. Now, how do we mask off certain portions of the screen? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 
here into Edit Looks. I could have also done it from the Screens menu uh, about halfway down. And this is our new screen right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here where this little Ghostbusters symbol is. One of my members in Church Tech U tells me it's she's a retired math teacher. Uh, it's actually called the Null Set in math. So either way, I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to add a new mask. So that brings me into the Masks Editor. So let's drag this off to the side, shall we? And I'm going to make sure that I have it the size of that particular screen. So that's this one, screen one. I should have given it a name, but I didn't. So we've got that. Now I've got a shape on that. Um, actually, let's do this one. And I'm going to draw a shape. So notice I've got some choices here. What I can do is I can just do a triangle. Except I've got a problem. This will mask out the triangle size instead of doing the exact opposite of what I want to do, which is mask out everything but the triangle size. So let's not do that. Instead, let's go back to shape and let's select custom. So uh, it allows me to click anywhere to start this. So I'm going to, I can always tweak this later, but just to make this kind of quick and dirty, I'm going to do this, this, and remember this is what I want to mask out. So I'm just going to go around the size and then click here to close that. And I'm going to actually double click on it, right click, make editable. Yeah, that'll work. And let's just tweak this just a bit, shall we? So, okay. So now it's kind of obvious to me that I have that masked out here since I have it set to blue. Now I need to do the exact same thing for this other side. So once again, shape custom and if you're familiar with the pin tool in Photoshop the controls are very similar but let's go ahead and I would spend a lot more time if I was doing this at my church than I'm doing with you but I'm basically here let me hide myself I'm basically just going through here really quick and I'm trying to do that okay and that mask that out so now now that I can see it really well let me go ahead and change that blue to black and same thing over here clicking on it first then going here to fill and changing that to black okay that is gonna need a little bit of tweaking because it's not quite an equilateral triangle, but let's uh, go back here. And having made it, let's select this again and let's select, notice this says mask two. I could just as easily rename that, but I'm not gonna, just to save some time. And uh, I select that and then I select save to make sure that that shows. Now let's go into show mode and let's preview that screen. Notice that when I do that it has cropped out everything except for that triangle. Now what we're looking at is it's actually coming through uh, from my audience screen. So instead let me right click here and it looks again I should have 
remove that announcement layer for that screen. And now let's this time click on this background and notice that I've got a big blob. This is a background from our friends at Church Motion Graphics. I can use any video I want and it will mask out everything but that. So right here I could also have uh, text, you know, what do you see? So, you know, I could absolutely I've already got this presentation up. So let me add another slide. I'll just click the plus button here. Actually, that won't help. Let's do that. It's got the current slide notes here, so I would need to go in here and edit this. But then this would show up. Um, here, let me edit the slide. And uncheck the visibility here so that it shows what's on the main slide here. The current slide notes, there's no slide notes, so I'm just going to ignore that for he here. And what do you see? Right now, obviously, I would tweak that to make it look like this, but I can put that in the middle just the same and go from there. Now, this was a video that was made ahead of time, but there's no reason why I couldn't just make this in ProPresenter, have all that working through ProPresenter, and uh, show that on my now upside down triangle LED wall. So I have um, a lot of abilities here and I can do quite a lot with that and ProPresenter 7. If you like this content, you'd probably like my ProPresenter 7 Quick Start course. So head on over to tdm.fyi slash pro, the number seven and quick and um, give me your name and email address and I will make a login for you for free. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from TrinityDigitalMedia.com and ChurchTechU.com reminding you to go out and change eternity.